What's the best sewing pattern for sewing loops on slack lines? Check it out on this episode of How Not to Highline. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinx and welcome to my gear room. We have been working for eight months on sew and loop patterns because people keep asking, are bar tacks the best way to create a sew and loop? So what we did was we tested rectangles and W's and zigzags and diamond shaped and we did on all sorts of webbing over the last eight months and we've done over 50 break tests to see what is the best pattern. Now what we did was we did four different sets of tests as people brought them up, had stuff made, and sent them to me. And JP Sootjack sent some tubular webbing to me, and Joel Luxembagelman sent some stuff from Puerto Rico. And James Hogarth has been super helpful. He has a $30,000 sewing machine, and he did a set of patterns with me. We've also done a lot of other tests that are going to be coming out soon. And then there's Sailrite, a company that actually makes sewing machines, wanted to test different patterns that they promote and sent me a bunch of stuff. Now, whenever this subject comes up, especially on Slack chat, this chart from caves.org always seems to be popping back up. And it's interesting because it shows that what I'm calling a W pattern is the highest breaking strength. And this is done on three quarter inch tubular webbing. And the bar tacks are, eh, they're okay on here. They're better than all the other options, especially squares or even boxes. However, we always seem to come up with different results here on SlackSnap. And I think doing different patterns on different webbings, one inch and two inch, will help us figure out what is the best pattern. Now, Given does do the box with an X on it on their trick lines, and they don't do bar tacks. However, everywhere else does bar tacks and including all the climbing gear I have. For example, cams, Dyneema slings, and every sew and loop from every slackline company. So now let's analyze our four batches of break tests that we did to see what kind of results we got. So JP Setjack sent me tubular webbing and he sewed everything with a bar tack machine with number 69 thread. That's basically the smallest thread you would pretty much ever use. And that's what some of my bar tacks have on them. If you have access to the Slack Snap samples, these are samples number 133 to 139. If you want to see the full videos, all my patrons have access to that. Uh, I always test this stuff with a weblock to weblock to find out what the RBS is, the realistic breaking strength, because the MBS is not always what we get in the field when we use it. They use big giant diverters in a lab to find out what minimum breaking strings are for webbing. However, it's not achievable for us usually. So on, on JP's tubular webbing, we got 17.79 kilonewtons. And then when we tested his W pattern, we got 16.5 kilonewtons. And then he had an eight bar tack test, which I have found eight bar tacks is not enough. 10 is actually barely enough with the thread size number 69. And that of course would has broken lower at 11.75 kilonewtons. Now we did something a little bit unique is we tried to make sewing loops redundant. And because we have all of our eggs in that basket, of course we have a backup line, but that also has a single loop. And I was not entirely sure I trusted loops. Uh, at the point we tested this, so we tried a redundant loop. Now these did break technically in two stages, so if one broke, you would know to get off the line, but you would have to hit that sweet spot between when the first break happened and when the second break happens. So basically the final break was only 15.15 kilonewtons. Now we only had seven bar tacks, and if you consider that it was on both sides, uh, so technically that would be the almost the equivalent of 14. Um, it, it still wasn't that great. So next was Joel Luxembagelman's samples from Puerto Rico. And he also sent a tubular webbing, webbing. And he also used number 69 thread, but it was on a home sewing machine and not a bar tack specific machine. And the sample numbers are between 202 and 210 for these. 
But the patterns we basically tested here were all of these crisscross, diamond-shaped, zigzaggy kind of patterns. So what we had was a looser stitch and a tighter stitch, and then we had a short and a long version. And the long version was about 30% longer than the short version. Now this broke super interesting in that it ripped in real time. It looks like slow motion, but in real time, it broke the stitching starting at the end of the loop and working towards the, the part that goes around the shackle. And then at the very end, it breaks uh, real quickly, just like tubular webbing does. It did this on all four different kinds of these crisscross samples we tested. And the looser stitched crisscross, whether it was short or long, basically had the same results at 6.6 .6 and 6.7 kilonewtons. And the tighter crisscross, where you had basically a lot more stitching uh, per inch, gave us 9.6 or 10.5 kilonewtons based on how long it was, if Joel made bar tacks in the same length as the short samples, it would have held at almost full strength of what we can achieve with sewn loops. So up next is James Hogarth's sewn loops that he's done on his expensive $30,000 machine that he has access to. He's a detailed individual who has done a ton of loops for Slack Snap. Now his machine can push through multiple layers of webbing with TEX 270, which is the 11 millimeter static rope of thread. So all of these samples swing all the way to the other extreme with the largest thread you would ever use on a sew and loop instead of the 69 thread. Now these samples are number 294 to 303, and you can see that we have two of each that we've done, which is actually the majority of all of the tests in this video. So on tubular webbing, in the rectangle pattern, we got 17.7 kilonewtons, and that is through three layers of tubular webbing. And with nine bar tacks in the tubular webbing, also through three layers, we got 18.9 kilonewtons, and it always is breaking the webbing in all of these samples here instead of the stitching. But it did retain more strength, not much, than the rectangle. And of course, our weblock to weblock test is a little bit stronger, usually is, versus a sew and loop at 19.13 kilonewtons. Now, our Feather Pro samples were super interesting in the fact that our rectangle broke at 19.4 kilonewtons, but it's pulling out the center. This is a polyester nylon mix with pillowed edges, and you can just kind of see how the thing is weaved uh, by the way it breaks. And nine bar tacks in three layers of Feather Pro also broke very interestingly, and it actually gave us two kilonewtons more than the rectangle at 21.4 kilonewtons. And then we did what I'm calling a W pattern, basically a giant vertical zigzag, and it broke at 20.8 kilonewtons, a little bit less than the nine bar tacks, and it ripped out the center of the webbing. It was super, super interesting. And Feather Pro weblock to weblock is 25.5 kilonewtons for comparison. Nine bar tacks in these samples proved to be the strongest. So our last batch of tests come from Sailrite, and they make a sewing machine. And some of the stitches that they promote and teach is some of the stuff that we tested. And our first webbing type is 2-inch seatbelt poly, which is 100% polyester flat webbing. And we tested 10 bar tacks, which it broke in my line lock before the stitching broke. And then we tested the diamond, which it actually broke the thread, which is a V92 poly thread. It's a little bit bigger than the 69, and it's 100% poly. And then we tested a W pattern, which it broke the webbing right at the beginning of the sewing pattern. So we got three different kinds of breaks, but they all came out to 19 kilonewtons. And our weblock to weblock, or in this case, a line lock to a line lock, gave us 22 0.69 kilonewtons. The next webbing type is one inch poly tubular webbing. Now, none of us actually walk on this for slacklining, but it is a great way to test different sewing patterns. The first one was 10 bar tacks that broke at 13 kilonewtons at the first bar tack. And then the diamond pattern broke also the webbing at the beginning of the pattern, also at 13 kilonewtons. 
but when we tested the W pattern, it only broke at 5 kilonewtons, which was a super random breaking strength, and it just broke the webbing at the sewing pattern. And then we tested a unique box pattern that uh, looks a little funny on 1 inch webbing, uh, and it only broke at 8 kilonewtons. And weblock to weblock on this stuff was 13 kilonewtons. So our uh, 10 bar tacks and diamond pattern basically came out the same as a weblock, which is interesting. Usually we get more strength out of weblocks. And our last webbing type was one inch heavyweight nylon. This is not tubular, but it is 100% nylon. And 10 bar tacks, it broke the webbing uh, in a unique way at 26 kilonewtons. And the diamond broke only at 21 kilonewtons, about four and a half kilonewtons less, but it broke the stitching and not the webbing. And the W pattern was similar as the diamond at 22 kilonewtons, and it broke the stitching as well. And when we tested this in a web lock, it was 25.9 kilonewtons, which is actually less than the 10 bar tacks that we got. So bar tacks won in this situation even above a web lock, which is pretty rare. Congratulations, you just made it through a 10 minute video about sewing patterns. Now the climbing industry and the slackline industry has generally stuck with bar tacks because they're more consistent. If you stick a thick enough thread in often enough, you can use any pattern. You can write your name in the webbing and it'll probably hold. Now the crisscrosses were the worst and I definitely don't recommend that, especially with the 69 thread. But the bar tacks are stuff that I will choose to use on my webbing and will continue to test those because they're the most common and the most easy to compare against other bar tacks. If you do use a 69 thread bar tack, you want to make sure that you go back and forth, maybe even three times, and then up and down all the way across. Now it's a lot more difficult to do that on a home sewing machine or a normal one, and it's better to use an actual bar tack machine. When I've watched bar tack machines do it, I'm like, wow, that's the right tool for the job. So far and what I've learned is that 10 bar tacks minimum for the 69 thread, seven bar tacks minimum for number 138, and also seven bar tacks for text 270. And text 270 isn't all that's, that's cracked up to be. There is a happy medium in the number 138 thread. But that is coming out in another episode soon. Now remember, there is no redundancy for a sew-in loop other than your backup line, which probably has a sew-in loop. So make sure these things are right, and if you're wrong, you're gonna die. Therefore, you shouldn't highline.